Eva joins us now. Now, we talk, we know, we've spoke to you a lot, obviously, on this show, yeah. and we talk a, a lot about different crime cases. But this one is particularly harrowing. I was reading through the brief mm. and thinking this... Yeah. Well, it sounds like a TV, a TV show. show. Yeah. Normally, I'm on this sofa talking about murder. Typical murders I've described as five minutes of madness. Mm -hmm. This is of a very different type of murder. A small number of murders are about the victim and the perpetrator not knowing one another, and they are, there are layers in this murder which are truly dark, truly shocking. And in effect, as you were introducing, uh, Scarlett Blake is going to encounter Jorge Carreno, who is a Spanish national in Oxford. It's July 2019. He's gone out drinking with his mates. He's got lost. Uh, Scarlett Blake is wandering about town, looking for a suitable victim, encounters uh, Jorge, and then is going to lure him to a local beauty spot, hit him over the head with a vodka bottle, uh, strangle him, put his body in water. And then here's the other shocking thing. Uh, it, that was originally thought of as an accidental death. That's in July 2021. Yeah. And Blake isn't going to be arrested until August 2023. Gosh. In the press, uh, yeah, it literally, it's chilling. In Ooh. the press, she was described as the cat killer. Why has that term been coined? OK, so there are now two mm. levels of darkness here. The first is that she has disassociative identity disorder. That's the first thing. Yeah. And one of those identities is of a cat. She will meow when she meets someone, when she is um, happy. Um, this is somebody... You know how you would chip your pet so that you would be able to... Yeah. She also has a chip in her, that, and her details are on an animal website. So leave that just to one side for a second. The reason why she's called the cat killer is that four months before she's going to encounter Jorge, she live streams, uh, she entices a neighbor's cat to her house. There are things that she does to the cat that I'm not oh. going to describe at this time, yeah. time of the day. But effectively, she live streams that event and she says in the video of that, that we have of when she's doing this, it now makes her want to um, a, a attack a human being. So I know we've got to be delicate about how we describe it, but what she live streams is the killing of the animal. Mm -hmm. She live streams yeah, the, is, the, the mm -hmm. killing of the... the first the, the torture. It, we're not going to talk about The torture of the animal, then the killing of the animal, and she will take a trophy from the animal, which she keeps in a casket as a trophy. So this is quite extreme behaviour. And you will know, because we all remember during lockdown that one of the sensations during lockdown mm -hmm. was watching Tiger King and also Don't Mess. I know that's not the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't Mess mm -hmm. with Cats. And and clearly, oh, and this is something that the trial judge says, clearly this is something that crops up at her trial and she is influenced by that particular series which involved a man called Luca Magnotta, who was a porn actor, who is going to suffocate two cats live on his YouTube channel and then uh, stream that and then he would go himself go on to murder a Chinese student called Yun Lin. So there's a lot of mirroring behaviour in this particular murder from that particular to, to the series. series. Do you um, know, often, sorry, Andy, you, you know when we, we discuss murders and we discuss, I don't know, behaviours, and, you know, we've, we've done that a lot on here, is there evidence that this... You know, this kind of murder. So, so, so what, what she did to the animal... Yeah. Is there evidence that animal cruelty can lead to murder? Yeah. Is, that, is that a pattern that you've seen before in other cases? One of, the th one of my consistent messages as a criminologist is that we have to treat cruelty to animals very seriously mm -hmm. indeed because of how it might progress yeah. later in life, especially if children are cruel to animals and torture animals. And a small number of offenders will go on not just to torture animals, Animals, because clearly you can have power over a small animal, oh. uh, but they will want to um, replicate that behaviour with other kinds of animals, larger animals, and ultimately human beings. Because what we're seeing here is both the normalisation of cruelty, once you've been engaged in cruelty with an animal, that normalises it for you, and it disinhibits you. You think, well, I've been able to achieve my fantasies by being cruel to this animal, I'd like now to engage in those kinds of behaviours with an adult. So the TV show, 
was a TV show and we, we feel that she was emulating the crime that was featured in the TV mm -hmm. show, not necessarily the TV show. Well, just to be clear... Just to be clear... Yeah, we've got uh, to be clear about that. There's no... Uh, the it, there's no doubt that she was um, emulating the behaviour of Luca Magnotta within the programme. Right. Rather, the programme isn't an instruction manual for how to how to behave. No. Yeah. In fact, the programme was an instruction manual about the ability of armchair detectives to work out who had yeah. committed the crime. How common is this? I mean, is it... Because it, yeah, it's so... It it's so, so, sounds so otherworldly, yeah, yeah, exactly, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this is very bizarre. These are very, very bizarre pieces of behaviour that we're seeing within this particular uh, murder. And so it, it's not common. What is common is drawing attention to cruelty to animals. Particularly, for example, I spend a lot of time talking about domestic violence. And often you will see within a domestic abusive relationships that the partner will be cruel to the family pet as a way of controlling how the woman or the children will behave within the household. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that's why it's really important, for example, to try train vets to recognise unusual mm -hmm. injuries to animals that they wouldn't normally see. Um, we haven't got long left here, but we should touch on the fact that obviously it seems it's a really cruel case and it's, you know, harrowing. But what we should really touch on is that at the heart of this case, there is a real victim yeah. here. And that seems yeah, to get forgotten get in a story that's kind of so Gosh. crazy. Ross, you're absolutely right. And let's remember, rather than Scarlett Blake, let's think about Jorge yeah. Pereno, who came to this country to work in the BMW factory in Cowley, was a triplet, you know, uh, just a, a, a genuinely nice human being, according to his family, and he has been murdered. And his family, it's taken oh. so long to get the answers, right? Oh. oh. Goodness me. Well, David, thank you. Fascinating it's... as ever, genuinely fascinating, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and thank you very much for sharing your ex expertise with us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.